Okay, so this is a very special video that I'm going to make today uh, with one of my students who I'm very, very proud of. Uh, proud of all my students, but even more proud of, uh, of, <laughs> of Crystal because she did the test many, many, many times before she came to me and she showed huge determination um, to get the score that she needed. So I thought we'd make this video today just for some of you who might be struggling, might have failed the test a few times, just to give you some inspiration, some motivation to keep going. Um, so Crystal, um, thank you very much for doing this today. And can you just give some background information about you so just people can get to know you a little bit? Yeah, sure. Um, well, uh, I'm working in Hong Kong as a nurse uh, uh, for, for the government. And recently, I'd like to move to a uh, move to the foreign country and work abroad with my husband. So I need to take the IELTS. So the reason why I chose IELTS but not other occupational English tests because it applies to many uh, Western countries, unlike the occupational English test, which is specific to, say, um, Australia or Canada. Mm -hmm. So if I can um, pass the IELTS, get the score I need, then I don't need to take two or three tests, which is quite advantageous. Mm -hmm. So um, I started... Um, I started to study about the materials of IELTS since last year. It was a long time ago. So I first began with some online material and then I attempted IELTS and I, I, th I think I got a six overall, and, uh, which, is, which is far from what I need. And then I enrolled in a face-to-face -face course. Uh, it just it it was a regular course uh, that includes uh, the speaking, listening, writing, and everything. But um, after course, I student I still couldn't get the score I need. So, uh, and then I found the I found the um, five day challenge, and I was amazed by how. Simple is the idea, and then I determined to enroll into the course. Mm -hmm. And uh, can you tell people how many times you had, did, did the test before you got the score that you needed? Well, oh, um, um, I'm sure I have um, I have do, uh, did the test with British Council for seven times because this is record online and then two or three times with IDP mm -hmm. so uh, I have experienced eight or nine times of failure so <laughs> I I'm actually quite experienced in taking IELTS <laughs> yeah you're an IELTS expert now. and can you tell people uh, what scores you got with, on your your last attempt um, my last ex attempt I got an overall eight uh, with nine in listening uh, eight in reading and then both seven in writing and speaking. Yeah, excellent. And we were really happy that you got that score because you didn't get that score first time and we were kind of like, why is this? We couldn't figure out why um, you couldn't get it, but we figured it out and we helped you get the score that you needed. So if you uh, were to give someone some advice, so someone in a similar situation to you, someone who wants to move to a different country and has maybe done the test a few times and failed, what advice would you give them? Mm, well, uh, well, from my experience, I think you really need to know your strengths and weaknesses. So uh, like me, I, I know I have no problem with listening and reading. Then I focus on writing and speaking. So for writing, uh, I, think, um, uh, the, I think the writing correction service is really good. And once you submit your essay, you know um, your weakness is in um, task achievement or grammar vocabulary, and then you focus in correcting it. For my case, um, sometimes I misunderstand the question. So I really need to understand exactly what to answer. And then I also improve my grammar and minimize my mistakes. Mm -hmm. And also um, I try to remember as many uh, synonyms and topic related vocabularies. 
so that you can achieve uh, a seven in every criteria. Oh, Crystal, I think we've we've lost you there. <laughs> Hopefully, you'll come back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, you're back sorry, now. Sorry. Okay, okay, cool. I'm back. So that's great advice for, for writing. Anything for speaking? Because I know that we worked a lot on your speaking um, and you know a lot about, about the speaking test. But what, what would you suggest to someone who is maybe where you were, you were getting 6.5 for speaking and you needed the 7. What, would, what advice would you give someone there? Yes. Uh, well, actually, um, there is a real gap between 6.5 and 7. So if you need a seven in speaking, you really need to work on every aspect so that you achieve like a pronunciation seven and a grammar seven, and then you can get over a seven. Mm -hmm. So for my case, I, um, I study all the materials in, the co in uh, Chris's course. And uh, so I, I'm familiarized with the format and I know like um, the content is not important and so that I can focus on and um, keep talking and um, elaborating my answer and but that is um, not not enough that is actually the basic you really need to speak and talk if you want to improve because um, listening or reading is not equivalent to speaking so what you need is to really speak so um, previously, I talked to a speaking partner, but then he um, became quite busy, and uh, so we can't talk really frequent. And then I um, I enrolled in uh, other other plan, and I talked to a native language speaker every day, thirty mm -hmm. minutes during my lunch time. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but uh, but it 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 takes time. So the miracle will not happen in a day, but mm -hmm. as long as you keep talking, you try to mimic their intonation and your, their word stress, and um, they tr you try to speak in a more um, native way, and you, you learn some uh, phrasal verbs and idioms from them, and um, keep, keep, um, keep improving your grammar because I found that I made a lot of mistakes on tenses and sometimes to the agreements on nouns and verbs mm -hmm. and just, just do your best and one day I believe um, you'll be there. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean just, just listening to you, your grammar is excellent but you're still, you still are making little small mistakes and I think that's something that people need to realize that in order to get a band seven for speaking, your grammar doesn't need to be perfect. Your, your vocabulary doesn't need to be perfect. Your fluency doesn't need to be perfect. It just needs to be at the standard where it needs to be. As I think uh, people put a lot of pressure on themselves in the speaking test that, you know, every sentence needs to be exactly correct when that really doesn't help you because you put yourself under too much pressure and then that can affect your fluency, affect your confidence, and then, you know, everything can kind of spin out of control. Would you agree with that? Yeah, yeah. So see, um, my English is not perfect, um, but I think I can communicate with um, mm. uh, with native English speaker like you, and mm -hmm. you gave me so much confidence. So, um, so just just keep talking and do it. Mm -hmm. I mean that that's really really good advice. And you talked about uh, that you used a different service than mine to find a native English speaker, so that you could talk to them every every day what what was that just if anybody wanted to use that or do you have a range of different services that you tried okay uh well actually it, um so remember you posted on um your uh, your wall of facebook and you ask if anyone um, use other online resources that is mm -hmm. useful and then and um so one of our uh, our buddies um talk about cambly a yeah. M B L Y, mm -hmm. and uh, um, well, it provides a platform to talk with a native English speaker in case if you don't have anyone to talk with. Yeah, yeah, I've I've heard of Cambly before, and I've heard it's really good. I know there's a number of different things, but one of the 
the big uh, request that we get from people is just like, I live in a non-English speaking country. Where do I find people to talk to? So there are so many different resources these days that you can find on the internet. But yeah, that, that's great advice. So Crystal, you got a, was it a perfect band line in listening? And I and listening. Yeah. And I listening. So people will probably be wanting me to ask you, any tips for listening? Because if you're getting a nine, you're obviously um, doing something right. So anything that you could suggest <laughs> to people for listening? Mm. Uh, well, um, in my usual time, uh, I used to, sw- uh, used to switch to English channel. So I, I haven't um, listened to Cantonese news for a long time since I started preparing for IELTS. So I try to listen to everything and the TV channel in English. And um, one tip uh, during the test is to write down what you listen, but um, uh, without changing any words. So mm-hmm. if you hear there is S at the end, remember to put an S. So just write down exactly what you hear in the test. Mm-hmm. And actually I think, um, um, British Council's listening is is more straightforward because um, so this time when I um, I got a nine in the listening, I found that uh, I only need to fill in sometimes one or the maximum three three words uh, in filling in the blanks, which is quite easy compared to IDP. I'm sorry, <laughs> but I'm comparing the two tests because you know I'm quite experienced. <laughs> Yeah, I, 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 I don't have any experience with IDP. I've only worked for the British Council, so yeah, yeah. You, you, would know, you would know more about that than me, to be honest. Yeah, it's okay. And, and um, so if you have more vocabulary um, in your mind, and then it'll be easier for you. Because I think some people are struggling with listening because um, they haven't heard of the vocabulary mm-hmm. before. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so you expand your vocabulary and keep listening to English and yeah, just keep practicing and remember to check your grammar at the end. Mm-hmm. Excellent. Good, good advice. I mean, a lot of people think that they have a, a listening problem or a reading problem when in reality they have a vocabulary problem uh, because a lot of the answers to the reading questions and the listening questions will be synonyms or require you to know the meaning of the word. So vocabulary is a huge part of of preparing for the reading test, listening test, speaking test, writing test. It's all a lot about vocabulary. So if you were to give people some quick advice about how to improve their vocabulary, what would you suggest? Mm, Well, I think vocabulary cannot be improved um, suddenly, magically. Mm -hmm. So, um, so you pay attention to the words that you don't know in your real life, and then um, you check every word you don't know. And if there is some some interesting word or some useful word, just um, drop it down. So um, for writing, uh, so a- actually I almost write um, an essay every day, mm-hmm. and um, after it, I compare with the model essay you. Um, you gave it to me, and then um, I learned the new vocabularies from your essay, mm-hmm. and then I will categorize it and write the um, write the synonyms together mm-hmm. uh, in got in a Google document. And mm-hmm. then one day, when I think when I have more synonyms to the same word, and then I search it, and then I can refresh my memory. Excellent. You should send me that Google document. I'd be interested to see all of the different uh, words and everything that you picked up. That'd be really interesting <laughs> to see. So, Crystal, yeah, thank yeah, you okay. very much no for uh, for sharing that information. That's great. Um, just uh, what, what happens now um, in your future now? What, what what difference is IELTS going to make to your future now? Uh huh. Well, um, after I got the score I need, and I plan to start my registration in. Um, in several countries to see uh, which one works first and then I will work abroad. So in the meantime, I will start my study in Canada next year mm-hmm. and I will, I will um, study a bridging course that helped me to get my nursing license. So basically, I'm one step forward and, um, and I'm quite relaxed uh, 
for a few days because yeah. I don't need to um, focus on writing and listening anymore. Yeah, you never have <laughs> to worry really about the silly test again, yeah, yeah. <laughs> which is great. And you gave me some excellent nursing advice about my son, which was really nice of you too. So there we go. <laughs> but thank no you problem. very much, Crystal. Uh, thank you. That, that should be of great help to a lot of people. And if you need anything in the future, just let me know. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Hope we can help others people as well. Thank you for your thank you for your hard work in helping other people. Thank you very much, Crystal. See you again. Bye bye.